Hey, how's it going? Uh, hopefully you guys have been enjoying the introduction to Romeo and Juliet. I hope you liked the movie. Uh, I know it's a cartoon, probably a little bit cheesy. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, but we thought it would do a good job setting some background for you. Um, I think that it does. Uh, keeps the general thing you obviously saw at the end when they had the statue of Shakespeare on there that it doesn't end the same way. The real version doesn't have a happy ending. Um, hopefully, um, Mr. Bartlett is going to uh, read through the prologue with you of the play. Uh, it's in the blue books that are over, you know, up by the front of the room over there by the green cabinet. I think you should read the prologue because even though it's a little confusing, it tells you exactly what's going to happen in the play. There were no surprises. So it's not the happy ending that took place in the Nomeo and Juliet version. So anyway, I don't want to give too much away. Um, but Shakespeare can be kind of confusing. He uses a lot of vocabulary words that are confusing. Um, just the whole way that they spoke, not even just the vocabulary, but sentence structure and all that gets a little bit confusing. So we wanted to give you as many options as we could uh, to help you understand and have background about Romeo and Juliet before you actually read um, the original version. Now, you will get some of the original version, but we might also use other versions as well to help you understand parts of it. And um, you already got the text version, which I didn't write that. We got that offline, um, but I thought that it did, you know, a cute job of showing it. And no, I know that's not how people text these days. It's older, and again, I didn't write it, so get over it, all right? It was entertaining, and it got the point across. Today, uh, you're going to be reading a modernized version of Romeo and Juliet, and um, so I wanted to let you know uh, the parts, but as you're going through Romeo and Juliet, I want you to remember the five love languages. I always kind of keep those in mind. Um, quality time, acts of service, physical touch, um, what are the other ones? Words of affirmation and gifts. Okay, so keep those in mind. Um, the characters, I mean, just like in real life, they're trying to express love in a certain way to their friends, family, um, people that they're married to, uh, dating, whatever, and it doesn't always come across that way because the love language that you speak is not always the love language that the person who's receiving it uh, is is understanding. Kind of like if you were speaking different languages. Um, if I was speaking to you in Spanish, but you only spoke French, you're not going to understand what I'm saying. And if I'm saying I love you in Spanish, you're not comprehending I love you in French because I'm not saying it in French. You see what I mean? So same with the love languages. Um, just as an example, um, Juliet's father sets up Juliet with a man that she wants him to marry. He does this as an act of service because he loves her. She does not receive it that way. She's very angry about it. All right. So just like I said, keep in mind the um, five love languages as you're going. And now I'm going to tell you all the parts for what you're going to be reading. And uh, I don't know if Mr. Bartlett has seen this video yet, so I'll try to read them slowly enough that you can write them down on the board. All right. And uh, students out there, once I give you your name, write down the character that you are so you don't have to go back and try to watch this video again. Right. I know you just want to see this. I got all this going on. Right. Um, by the way, haven't videotaped it yet, but uh, wrote a new song. Going to be performing that for you soon. So I'll be working on that. All right. Brennan, you are going to play the part of Samson. Brennan is the part of Samson. Cody Badger. You are Gregory. You're also, that's a really small part at the beginning. Uh, you're also going to be Paris at the end. So Cody Badger is Gregory and Paris. You're welcome. All right. James, you'll be playing the part of Ben Volio. Also, anytime in the play that you see Ben, that's you. All right. That's you, James. Ben Volio is Ben. Anthony, you are Tybalt. It's not Tybalt. It's Tybalt. And um, you will also, at the end, have a short role of Balthazar. So, Anthony, you are Tybalt and Balthazar. Cameron, you are Lord Capulet. Cameron is Lord Capulet. Eric is Lord Montague. 
Eric is Lord Montague. Alex is the prince. Mr. Bartlett will play the part of Lady Montague and Lady Capulet and the narrator. All right, so there you go. All right, Reese, you're going to be the nurse. Hey, you can't expect Jenna and Mr. Bartlett to play all the female parts. You know, back in Romeo, I mean, not Romeo, Shakespeare's Day, the guys played all the parts. So, I know. But I wrote a song just for you, Reese, so you're just going to have to deal with it and be the nurse. And no, you can't go to the bathroom or leave the room. You're going to have to just stay and be the nurse. All right, Jenna, you're Juliet, of course. Hello, like you didn't expect it. Michael will be Mercutio. Michael Needham. Mercutio. Zach will be our Romeo. There you go. Dougie Fresh will be the Friar. And that should do it. So I'll be back soon. Take it easy, friends. Bye.